want you to picture this so you can understand what's happening when we come to church seeking a miracle without taking care of our hearts. This is the landing points. This is the tarmac. This is the area where the plane wants to land, but there's an obstacle. There's a hindrance. There's a barrier. No matter how fervently you pray, no matter how passionately you worship, no matter how you fast, you do all night vigil, so far as the obstacle is still there, the plane cannot land. Many of us start running from one place to another, trying to find solution, not knowing that the problem is within us. We have not removed the obstacle. There's still an obstruction. There's still something blocking us. And we're busy going to this church, going to that church, going to this crusade, going to that crusade. Before you know, you get anointed water here. You get anointed oil here. You get anointed pyjama here. You get anointed underwear here. What other anointing do you want? You run from man of God to man of God, but the problem is within you. (laughs) There's an obstacle. And you know what happens? This is the painful parts. By the time you run up and down, look for solution, and you don't seem to see that blessing coming, you, you hear the noise of the plane going over you, missing you. Someone else receiving a blessing. Someone else receiving their touch. You say, why not me? You begin to look at God in a bad light. Perhaps He doesn't love me. Perhaps He he loves this person more than me. Perhaps my sin is too much that He cannot forgive. And what, what happens when you look at God in a bad light and frustration comes and desperation comes? Before you know it, you will find yourself being deceived. Just imagine, you that are looking to remove the obstacle, by the time in that frustration, in that desperation, someone says, let's go here. You go there and you find yourself in the house of a spiritualist where you are touched by someone who's not supposed to touch you, where you taste what a Christian is not supposed to taste. Rather than removing the obstacle, you only seem to increase it. It only seems to be getting worse. Then what happens? You begin to look for imaginary enemies. That's my aunt cursed me when I was young. She is the cause. That's my grandmother. Oh God, God will deal with her. What happens? What's going on? As a result of that, another obstacle. Oh my God, another one. You begin to say that my business partner duped me. He is the cause. God would punish him. God would deal with him. When you sit back and you're set back, you wallow in your self-pity, what happens? You begin to try and create happiness outside of God. Let me just take some alcohol. As you take the alcohol, what happens? What happens? (laughs) What happens? Another one! Come on. And you want the plane to land? You want God to come with his cargo of blessings, peace, joy, abundance, all the promises in the scriptures. You want them to be released unto your life, but your heart is filled with obstacles. Maybe this is offense. You've not forgiven that person that offended you last year and you're here in the church today. God bless me. God heal me. God deliver me. God set me free. Remove offense and the blessing will come. What am I trying to say, brethren? When you take care of your hearts, God will take care of your miracle. 
when you take care of your hearts, God will take care of your blessing. When you take care of your hearts, God will take care of your success. Stop looking for imaginary enemies around you and start looking within. And by the time you take care of your hearts and the obstacles are removed, there's a free access for the Spirit of God to land and release unto you the abundance of His provision.